Welcome to I Lecture like Online. Our viewers give us very interesting questions. And here's one of them, a very interesting problem which I had never seen before. It's a problem where they give you neither the initial velocity nor the initial angle of a projectile being launched from the ground. The only information they give you is that it lands, it lands four seconds later and they're asking to find the maximum height reached. Initially, you look at that and go, there's just simply not enough information given. How can you find the maximum height? But it turns out there is enough information given. So let's find out how to calculate this. Well, first of all, any projectile, if the total time that it takes to reach the ground like this is four seconds, then it will reach the maximum height in two seconds because the amount of time that it takes to go up is exactly the same amount of time as it takes to go down. So we can say that time to reach the maximum height is equal to two seconds. And let's say that max h is equal to just call it capital H. So let's say capital H is the maximum height and we reach that maximum height in two seconds. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find the horizontal and vertical components of that initial velocity. So here we have V initial in the X direction, which is equal to V initial times the cosine of the angle theta. And then here we have the initial velocity in the y direction, so v initial in the y direction is equal to v initial times the sine of theta. All right. Now what we need is we need one of our equations of kinematics, and the equation we're going to use is as follows, that v equals v initial plus g times t, and this is in the y direction. So this is at maximum height, at max height. So when we reach the maximum height right there, V will be zero in the Y direction. So zero equals the initial V in the Y direction, which is V initial times the sine of theta. And then plus GT, but G is a negative. So minus 9.8 times the time, and it takes two seconds to get there. So this is times two, which means that v initial times the sine of theta is equal to twice that or 19.6 so now we have a value for v initial times the sine of theta so now what we need to do is find out what that maximum height is so this height right here so it would be h so y equals h at this is point so at maximum height We're going to use this equation, y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared. Again, at that height, time is going to be two seconds. The final height, well, that's what we're looking for, which is h equals the initial height starting from the ground is going to be equal to zero. Initial velocity in the y direction is going to be v initial times the sine of theta times t, but t is known to be two seconds, and g is a minus 9.8, so that's minus 4.9 times two squared. Realizing that over in this equation, we find that value for not for v by itself or sine, but sine of theta by itself, but the product is equal to 19.6, which can then be substituted in here. So we can then take this and substitute it in here. And so we can get height is equal to this quantity, which is 19.6 times 2 minus 4.9 times 4. And so h is equal to, and now we need a calculator. So we have 19.6 times 2 minus 4 times 4.9, and we get 19.6 meters. So amazingly enough, the only piece of information we needed was that it took four seconds for the entire projectile motion, only half that time, two seconds to reach the maximum height. And by only solving for V sine theta as a product in this equation and substituting it into this equation, we're able to find the maximum height. And that is how it's done. Pretty nifty, huh? Yeah, all we have to realize is we don't have to solve for V initial by itself or sine of theta by itself, but the product together, which appears in both equations.
that makes it easy. But knowing that maximum height is reached at half. And knowing, that's right, and knowing that maximum height is reached at the halfway point in time. Yep, that's it.